In the long line of beloved Nintendo properties, the Earthbound series, or Mother series as it's known in Japan, was for a long time one of the most criminally ignored by the company. However, it seems F-Zero has since taken its place. Yeah, can I get an F in chat for F-Zero? Yes, the Mother series was sadly uncared for by the company, or so it would seem, as here in the States, the titular middle child, Earthbound, was the only one to see the light of day for years. Hopping back across the pond, in Japan, the series saw lasting success, and the country was treated to more than just a little fanfare with the release of such goodies like miniature figures, CD soundtracks, and oh yeah, two other entries in the series. Those obviously being Mother 1 in 1989, which we did eventually get in the form of Earthbound Beginnings in 2015, and the long sought after and coveted Mother 3 in 2005. But in between these two releases, Japan also received the often overlooked yet fascinating compilation Mother 1 Plus 2 on the GBA. This seemingly redheaded stepchild of an already redheaded stepchild franchise is little more than just a re release. But behind its micro sized Game Boy cartridge sits a number of small yet interesting changes as well as an appropriately quirky history. So why not dig into it? Besides, any excuse to talk about Earthbound, aka my favorite game of all time, is an excuse worth making. Released in 2003, in preparation for the upcoming release of Shigesato Toy's Goodbye to the Franchise, Mother 3, Mother 1 Plus 2 obviously consists of its two predecessors, both of which I feel I can't do justice, nor do I have the time to in this video, so I'll save that for a proper review in the future. But in the meantime, here's a quick overview. Mother 1 follows a baseball cap clad boy named Nenten, real subtle, as he travels across the cities and suburbs of America where he meets an interesting array of friends and foes. But it seems trouble is slowly building in each town as an impending alien threat draws near. Because of this, Nenten and company must use their PSI powers to fight back and eventually beat the alien leader Gigu, who holds an intriguing past that is intertwined with Nenten's. What starts as a simple and quirky RPG quickly develops into something much grander than one might imagine. Outside of the unique modern setting, Mother 1 is a fairly standard RPG of the era, with its cookie cutter turn based combat and overworld exploring. Although, compared to a few earlier examples of the genre, the game is a bit more forgiving in terms of grinding as well as pacing. This is even further improved upon with the inclusion of the Easy Ring hack, which increases your party's attacks and rewards you with double XP, making the game an absolute pushover. Graphically, the game feels a bit mute as colors are pretty dull and at times sparse or even ugly. But the game makes up for it with oodles upon oodles of infectious charm that the series is known for. So, much like its successor, talking to NPCs is far from a waste of time. Real quick, I'll say the music is pretty good, with more than a few of these tunes getting a nice 16-bit upgrade in the sequel, but they still manage to impress in 8-bit. Overall, Mother 1 is a great little RPG that all retro gamers who enjoy RPGs should experience, especially if you haven't played Earthbound, as this is a good first entry that sets up the right expectations and is wholehandedly topped by its sequel. Speaking of... Wow, this is going to be tough to keep short. The legendary sequel Earthbound is almost just a big budget retelling of the first game. You take the role of the striped shirt, shifting ball cap wearing Ness, who is awoken by a fallen meteor and soon after declared the chosen savior of Earth by a bee that has come from 10 years in the future to warn you of Gygus's evil plan. From then on, you'll be met with plenty of silly, odd, and crazy adversaries as you track down eight melodies in order to increase your power to hopefully destroy the ever-evolving embodiment of evil, Gygus. Once again, Earthbound is a pretty straightforward RPG that even for the time seems almost too streamlined. But that ends up working heavily in its favor as it lets the incredible world of the game maintain an over-the-top amount of wackiness, charisma, and sentiment that elevates the simple gameplay into something much more memorable. 
and despite its simplicity, it actually features some innovative mechanics like the rolling health meter and the auto win system. Not to mention the untouchable and evocative soundtrack that gracefully sings in harmony with this beautiful game. Never has a video game soundtrack been so diverse, experimental, ahead of its time, and downright perfect. From soul-soothing ambience, zany electronica, modern use of sampling real songs to make new ones, and much, much more. I can't think of any other game from the era that dared to try something so ambitious and get it so right. Easily the best soundtrack of the 16-bit generation. But of course, how can I go on without mentioning just how much heart, soul, and emotion that Earthbound's ingenious story delivers. From silly NPCs and quests, odd and epic bosses, laughable and even heartwarming moments, to profound, heady introspection and even darker adult themes, there is no question that the impact this little game has left on so many, including myself, easily cements it as not only one of the best RPGs ever made, but one of the greatest games of all time. And when you package these two gems into one portable, unforgettable experience, it makes for an interesting history. Upon the game's release in June of 2003, the compilation saw two variants, one of which came with a neat Mr. Saturn cell phone strap as a pre-order bonus, and one which was just the baseline game. Combined, the game sold a whopping estimate of 310,000 copies, the majority of which were sold in the first year alone, showing that Japan was still eager for something more. And they weren't alone, as a future issue of Nintendo Power would reveal that Mother 1 Plus 2 was the most wanted import game of that year. Man, what a real kick in the balls for Nintendo to acknowledge that and still do nothing about it. Oh, it really leaves the fans feeling like a bunch of worthless protoplasm. Speaking of Nintendo angering fans, the TV ads that ran prior to the game's release did not go over well with fans of the first game, as a heavy emphasis was put on advertising Mother 2 rather than both games. So many felt they weren't giving enough credit to the original, and while Mother 1 hasn't aged as gracefully as its successor, it's still worth drumming up some hype over, especially with the inclusion of the quality of life changes found in this version. The TV ads weren't the only controversial element from this release, as there was some confusion regarding the official release of the soundtrack. Containing only 26 choice songs split amongst the two games, and not the entirety of both OSTs, it was poorly received, as many thought it was a long-awaited re-release of the original's entire score, which it was not. On top of that, it was severely lacking due to the Game Boy's poor audio compression, which greatly hinders both games' impeccable soundtracks. Here are some examples. I found it especially odd how certain melodies are downplayed in the GBA versions. For example, in this song, on the SNES, the higher melody leads the song. Whereas in the GBA version, the harmony in the lower octave takes the lead instead. It's quite odd and kind of dampens some otherwise excellent tunes. On a positive note, the outcry and backlash from the compilation CD did make its way to Nintendo and a proper remaster of Mother 1's OST found its way onto shelves just six months later in early 2004. 
But the biggest and most head-scratching part of this game's history is the translation. Now, wait, what translation? Both of these games are already in Japanese. In an incredibly odd move on Nintendo's part, the games were both retranslated from English back into Japanese for the port. Which is even more shocking considering that Mother never had an official US port to retranslate, meaning they likely used the cancelled prototype headed by Phil Sandhop. This is given further credence when you see some of his improvements utilized in the port, like the addition of the run button. The company that was tasked with the translation has never officially been acknowledged by Nintendo for whatever reason. And with this game eventually getting a fan translation, it really feels like the snake is eating its own tail, as the games have now been translated from Japanese into English, then translated back to Japanese, only to be retranslated back into English. Nonetheless, because both games were retranslated from English copies, these versions are technically censored. You'll find that various lines of dialogue throughout both titles have been toned down. In Mother 1, there are several references to God or religion that were changed during translation due to Nintendo of America's strict guidelines. Similarly, this sign in Spookane no longer advertises the soon-to-be-built strip club, this woman in the bar no longer offers the kids a beer, and this kid in Twinkle Elementary is no longer struggling to beat Dragon Quest 3. Not to mention, all of the town names have been swapped out. Marysville is no longer Thanksgiving, Spookane is no longer Halloween, and so on. But most of these changes were reversed in the Starman.net fan translation of the Mother 1 portion of the game. In Mother 2, a few references to death or dying were altered, as were numerous pop culture references that NOA felt might get them in legal trouble. Like the mention of Superman by this person in Onet, Grateful Dead Valley was changed to Peaceful Rest Valley, and the Skywalker was changed to the Skyrunner. But it's not just text, as some visual elements have been tampered with as well. In Mother 1, a handful of enemies were changed, the Crows and BB gang members no longer have cigarettes, the ghouls no longer drip blood, the nipples have been unfreed on the array of oddly erotic suits of armor, and the gang zombies' bullet wounds have been patched up with ties. He may be bleeding out, but at least he's doing it in style. In Mother 2, what were once octopus statues are now pencil and eraser statues. The happy happy cultists no longer sport an H on their hoods, and instead have a fluff ball to make them look less like the bootlickers in white. And Ness is now dressed in pajamas instead of his birthday suit when he arrives in Magic Ant. Although, not all has changed. For example, despite being known as the Runaway 5 in the US versions, all posters still advertise them as the Tonzura brothers in Mother 2. Even little things like the red crosses on hospitals and regular crosses on churches and gravestones are still present in these iterations. So why the changes? Why not just use the already existing ROMs for this release? Well, it's speculated that with the recent creation of the CERO just the year prior, which is basically the Japanese equivalent to the ESRB, that Nintendo was afraid the games may not meet the family-friendly standards they had recently shifted towards, and the CERO might give them a stricter rating. However, with the new release also came the opportunity to fix some old bugs. For example, the infamous Shattered Man glitch that crashes Earthbound if you leave these enemies alive and lose to them after defeating Gygus is no longer an issue. Speaking of Gygus, you can no longer use an exit mouse to escape the cave of the past, but, in an ironic twist, you can now use one in the Devil's Machine, which wasn't present in any prior release. In Mother, the speedrunning favorite Breadcrumb Glitch, which is utilized to skip large portions of the game, has also been fixed. And the infamously hard Mount Etoy has corrected some balance issues and was properly playtested this time around, which was not the case for the original. There are numerous differences between all releases of these games. Seriously, this is only scratching the surface. So if you want to know more, I highly recommend heading over to Starman.net or Legends of Localization for a far more in-depth comparison. From fixed glitches, slight censorship, and rabid fans, Mother 1 Plus 2 has earned itself a niche spot in the annals of import gaming history with its myriad of happenings. If you yourself would like to get your hands on a copy of this wonderful remaster, then I highly recommend heading over to Etsy or eBay where various fan-translated copies can be found at a decent price. And with both Mother 1 and finally the Mother 2 section being fully translated, you now have one hell of a good time on your hands and in your pockets.
So grab your baseball cap and a few friends, and remember, there's no crying till the end. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this episode, consider checking out these other videos right here, or even subscribing. Also, if you'd like to throw me a couple of bucks, you can support the show on Patreon.